Naeem, thank you so much for joining us once again on East Connect podcast. Um, so Naeem is a career consultant at Cardiff Metropolitan University and provides career support to their international students. He's worked for the career service for over five years and has over 20 years experience of working as a career consultant. Uh, thank you once again for joining us the second time, um, Naeem. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it, Matthew. Uh, so today we are going to talk about um, interviews. The last time we spoke about CV, uh, we were able to tear down CVs, talking about the component, what makes a good CV, and um, what are the importance of international students articulating their values using their CVs, uh, which are part of the components of application. Um, so. Now let's let's talk about interview because um, interview is one of those activities in application process that makes um, people nervous, not just international students, uh, because of the fear of how to say their words, how to, how to put on their words. They are not sure of the kind of question they're going to ask them with interview. Right? What is the importance? of interview preparation for international students? Okay. So first of all, for the international students or all students, to be honest, um, getting to the interview stage is, is a really big deal. So getting to that stage, we've got to congratulate our students and our graduates as well, because they've actually managed to navigate the, the recruitment process. So they've obviously applied maybe through a CV or a cover letter, or it's been an online application. Maybe they've undertaken some psychometric tests. Maybe there's been one or two other things that the, the, the company or the employer has asked them to do. And, and, and the interview is often the last or the final stage. And, and that's where the pressure then mounts. So well done to all the students who get to that stage. However, there's just one or maybe two more hurdles to jump over. And that's where the hard work begins. And one of the biggest issues and problems that our students, and of course our international students have, is the lack of preparation. It's not really being aware of what the interview will be. So there are so many different types of interviews. And one of the things that our students don't really find out is that maybe they didn't realize that it's a telephone interview or it's an online interview or it's a face-to-face -face interview or it's a panel interview. There are so many different interviews that our students need to be aware of. And sometimes it's a case of reading the information clearly from the employer. And that is often just read very, very quickly. So that's the first thing that our students must do is when they get notification that they have an interview, they need to read the instructions. And the instructions are often very clear. And if there are any issues or problems, um, if for example, the date isn't convenient, the time isn't convenient, if the instructions are not clear, if the employer has said, please find attached a map and there's no map, you know, or there's no email, there's no phone number, then it's really important for the student to be fully aware of what to expect at that interview as well. So that's the first thing as well, ensuring that all the information that they have regarding the interview is, is correct. And, and some of our students don't really understand, or actually I should say international students here, don't really understand the concept of assessment centers. So an interview is a meeting. An assessment center is a lot more than a meeting. It's a num, it's a number of exercises that the student has to undertake. And there is often confusion thinking, oh, an assessment center, it must be something to do with an interview as well. So I know of students who've been to an assessment center thinking it was an interview and they've obviously had to undertake 
a number of different exercises and different tests um, to get passed through, obviously, the instructions that they've given to ensure that they get the job. Now, um, that's a, a total separate ball game. That's something completely separate and something that our students need to prepare even more harder for as well. But let's just focus on the interview. Secondly, it's all about preparing for the interview as if it was an exam. So I always give this scenario to my students. If you've got an exam coming up, you would revise, not hours or days earlier, but weeks earlier. If you've got a driving test coming up, then you would practice, you would get in the car and you would take lessons and you would learn to drive. And this is what our students don't do. What they need to do is actually prepare and anticipate potential questions that may arise. And a lot of our students, unfortunately, don't anticipate and don't prepare. It's a fairly straightforward situation because in most interviews, you can guarantee that there will be a certain number or a certain type of interview question being asked. So let me give you an example. Tell me about yourself. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Why should I hire you? These kind of questions are very common. These are called the generic interview questions. Um, what do you know about our company? Now, this is, well, these questions are often, um, well, our students often find them quite challenging because they've not prepared for them. And this is where there's a guarantee that there will be one or two generic or general interview questions that will be asked. So these are easy points that our students can achieve as well. Now, many of our students looking at those questions actually find it quite then challenging and, and find it quite difficult to answer those questions. So for example, what are your weaknesses? Many of our students are very honest and tell them what their weaknesses are and leave it at that. What they need to be saying as you're probably aware, Matthew, is it's not just about being honest and identifying certain weaknesses. It's all about then saying, well, yes, this is my weakness. However, this is what I'm doing to overcome that weakness. Or this is what I've done or this is what I've achieved. And now I'm absolutely fine. I don't see that issue or that problem as a weakness now. It's turning that weakness into a strength. So when I talk to my students about that, they're like, oh, I didn't realize that that's what they were asking. So they may know that those are the questions that are being asked, but they're not preparing the answer. All right. Tell me about yourself. A very, very common question. Guaranteed that that will come up. And again, many of our students start talking about personal things. They'll talk about things that they did 10 years ago. It's not a chat. It's an interview. So the employer wants to know about your education, your experiences, and how your skills match the job that you're applying for. So that's a big thing that our students aren't doing but need to do is to prepare for those interview questions. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, Nahim. That was very comprehensive. Um, I mean, I know you made mention of driving test. And when you made mention of that, it made me to remember when I was taking my, uh, when I was about to take my driving um, exam, the practical at the time, I remembered aside from having my instructor, I was watching YouTube videos over and over again. Every day I was watching YouTube videos for hours because my driving back home is different from my driving here in the UK. So I had to unlearn what I know from back home and then learn the UK way of driving, the road regulations, the rules of, of the road. And um, I saw the role that preparation played because I passed my test without any faults. And I was surprised. 
you know, but it was consistent practice and preparation. And so we cannot overemphasize the importance of preparation for um, interview to international students, most especially. Now, when it comes to preparation, right? Um, I mean, you may mention around uh, asking them a question and then probably they are beating around the bush or telling or giving an um, irrelevant information that is not fit for the interview because it's not a conversation, it's an interview. So let me now ask you a question. How can an international student feel relaxed in an interview? Because they can be very, very nervous when it comes to interview. Right. Yep. And in some interview, um, some employers or uh, recruiters might make you feel nervous. Some might create a very relaxed atmosphere for you just to get you talking. Like when I was taking my um, driving um, test at the time, the um, instructor, the examiner who was sitting up beside me, kept me relaxed. We were having a conversation. We were chatting about what I was doing, what was my occupation, what are my interests, you know? So I think that was part of what he used to assess me to see that even while we were chatting, I was still very much concentrated on what I was doing on the, on the road. So how can international students feel relaxed in an interview? Okay, so the first thing is going back to preparation. The more prepared you are, the easier and better you will feel going in to that interview. So going back to that scenario about um, having an exam, if you have prepared, if you have revised, if you have undertaken all the work, then you will be more confident than the student who maybe has not revised, who's not undertaken the work. So that's the first thing. Always preparation will make you more confident. Secondly, the I would say in terms of um, going for interviews, the more, the more interviews you have, the more, or sorry, the less nervous you'll become. So many of our students, when they've had their first or their second or their third interview and they've been rejected, they then start to understand what kind of questions are coming up and what, where they're going wrong. And if they're asking for feedback, which is what I ask all our students to do, that if they have been rejected, if they've been unsuccessful, to then go back to the employer and ask for feedback. Because you could be going for interview after interview after interview and making those same mistakes. So it's a process. So really important to get feedback. Learn from the feedback, learn from your mistakes, work on your answers, anticipate further and different questions that will come up as well. And um, that will make you more confident in going in to the interview. Thirdly, you mentioned about your driving instructor making you feel more comfortable and interviewers do the same as well. Not all, but many do as well. They're on your side. They want you to do well. So they will understand the situation that you're going through because they were once there as well. All right. So they've got your back. And the questions that they're asking the student or you, they're asking all of the shortlisted candidates as well. So that's the other thing as well. And the other thing I think our students don't really realize is that they put so much pressure on themselves. They stress, they worry, they become anxious, and then therefore they're unable to perform. If you're able to take a step back, think of this interview as not an interview, but a meeting, a chat, a conversation. And an interview is a two-way conversation. Yeah, this is not about them asking you questions. Remember, you have an opportunity to obviously answer their questions, but to ask them questions as well. And by the end of the interview, I know students who've undertaken the interview and they've realized this is not the right job for them. So 
I think as long as our students can take a step back, reflect, understand that if they get the job, amazing, but if they don't, it's not the end of the world. And I think that's where our students unfortunately fall down. They put a lot of pressure on themselves as well. But like I said, practice makes perfect. So the more practice you have, the more prepared you are, and also using the resources from the career service as well. So all university career service will have resources to help and support you. And certainly at Cardiff Met, we have two options. We have an option where our students can actually meet with us face to face and we can conduct a mock interview. So we've got um, obviously consultants like myself where we will meet with the students for half an hour. We will hopefully have the job description, the person specification from them before the meeting or details of the, the job or the advert. And from there, what we can do is we will, we will pick say four or five questions maybe from the job description and the person specification and and think well look it's not guaranteed that they will ask you these questions but this is the feeling that we've got so we're going to ask you and then we are able to give them feedback so that's the first thing our students can arrange a one-to-one -one meeting with us to undertake a, um, a mock interview and secondly we have um a software, an interview platform software where students can actually in their own time, in their own homes, as long as they've got a Wi-Fi connection, can undertake um, a, a practice interview session, which is recorded. So they will be asked a number of interview questions. They are recorded giving the answers. And right at the end, a recording um, is uploaded so you're able to replay that recording so you're able to see what answers you've given plus an AI report is generated which gives you an overview of whether you said the right things were keywords said did you hesitate um, did you use ums ers ours uh, and it'll give you a mark out of um, I think it's a mark out of 10 as well. So those are the uh, the things that we do, certainly for our students, to help and support them with their interview preparation. I would say that's a very good use of AI. Yes. To help the students. That's a very good use, I would say. That's just yeah. a very, very good <laughs> use. Thank you so much for that response there. So taking the fear bit out of the international student, making them feel relaxed, Ryan, what are the common um, mistakes that you've seen international students make over the years within your career during interviews and how can they avoid these mistakes? Okay, so again, it's the preparation or the lack of preparation. We've talked about that before and it's important to mention that again. So they need to prepare, end of, end of story. Yeah, that's the one of the, the the main things that our students don't do. So that's the th the thing. Secondly, they need to research the company, and that comes as as part of the preparation, because there could be a question such as, "What do you know about our company? What do you know about our business?" And what employers often ask is. Um, questions about what's happening within that market, within um, within that kind of um, industry sector. And if you don't have that knowledge or that commercial awareness, they'll pick up on that as well. And again, that comes through preparation as well. So it's not just a case of knowing who you are and, and having questions or answers ready for the questions that may be asked it's having that wider broader knowledge and commercial awareness about that particular role about that particular sector so say for example our our student goes for a job um, within the sustainability sector 
So that's very hot at the moment. Lots of jobs, lots of opportunities. It's in the news a lot. There's an expectation that you're going to have a point of view about sustainability. Okay, so what you need to do is to understand what is going on in the UK. What's going on in Europe? What's going on in America? What's going on around the world regarding sustainability? I mean, sustainability is such a big and broad subject area and it can be broken down as well. And those are the things that our students need to do as well. A big thing that our students don't do and should be doing is storytelling. So when a student is being interviewed, they're asked the question, they will answer it, and that's it. There's an expectation that our students should be saying more. And we're not just talking waffling or going off on a tangent. We're talking about giving an example. So say, so say for example, an employer asks a student, um, Tell me about a time you um, played an important part in a project or a team. Our students will tend to answer that only, you know, half-heartedly or just, just maybe just give um, a couple of points or just a couple of sentences. And a question like that, which is a competency-based question, needs to be broken down. Our students need to understand that a question like that, you would have to answer that using the STAR technique, which is situation, task, action, result. Our international students don't know about competency-based interview questions. They don't know about STAR. So the first time that they encounter these questions, they don't know how to answer them. So they may give the situation and they may give the task. They don't necessarily give the actions and the results as well. And it's really important for our students to have that story ready to tell the employer as well. And it's not just telling a story. It's all about identifying the skills that that particular job requires and bringing those skills into your answer and then giving those examples and telling the employer that you have a particular skill by giving that example. That is something that our international students find challenging, difficult, but again, very similar to what you were saying about when you were driving, you had to unlearn everything that you knew and learn again and what that's what we do with our students as well. So when we undertake mock interviews with our students, we don't tell them about the skills area. We'll, we want to see how they answer that question. And if they are using or identifying their skills and promoting their skills and giving examples of their skills, we will commend them and say, well done. That's exactly what the employer is looking for. However, many of our students miss the mark completely. And we then revisit that question again. We look at the job description. We look at the person's specification. We identify what the company is ideally looking for, bring that out, try to identify examples by asking those meaningful questions and then using those examples that they can then provide in the interview situation. So lots of things going on that our students don't really understand as well. No, oh, and one final thing as well, dress to impress. So I know that's so important, first impressions. First impressions, um, there's a saying, you never get a second chance to create a first impression. Once you've created that first impression, that's it. And many employers make decisions about, you know, people that they're interviewing within the first kind of 60 to 90 seconds of meeting someone. You do the same. I'm the same as well. Yeah. Once you've met someone for the first time, you've, you're instantly creating 
um, you, uh, of, the, of, of the students as well. So it's really important to create a very positive impression, dress to impress, always overdress rather than underdress. So we're smart, always smart, presentable. And that gives you confidence as well. When you're dressed to impress, never be late as well. That's another thing that you can, you know, that our students often do as well. Um, remember, we run on UK time and UK time, you know, employers are very strict about, about, you know, people being late. So really important for you to be on time and also to ensure that you um, dress appropriately and properly for the interview. And that means online as well. If you've got an online meeting, it doesn't matter what you're wearing underneath. That's absolutely <laughs> fine. But as long as you're smart and presentable, you know, from the waist upwards as well. So this is not just meeting in person. This is to do with with um, online meetings as well, on Zoom and on Teams as well. And as you know, since the pandemic, many, many interviews now take place online. Like we are having this online now. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be great if it was face-to-face -face in real life, in, in person, wouldn't it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, it's like very, very, very nice. Um, thank you so much for that, um, um, Nahim. I mean, you mentioned the part of storytelling, which is an important part of the interview because it's not the international student boasting about what they can do, but it is articulating and presenting yourself the right way to yes. the employer. So now, when it comes to the preparation, how can international students, what kind of technique can they use to, or uh, can they employ to effectively research a company before the interview? What are the things they should be looking at for? Okay, so first of all, the company will have or should have a website. So any information regarding the business should be available, readily available on the website. It's, uh, you know, 99% of the time, companies, organizations have a website. So that's always the first point of contact. Um, so there will be information about maybe vacancies, about benefits, about uh, people who work there, any news, any updates, the products, the sectors, different locations. And that's really important to know about. It's to be aware of as well. All right. Secondly, social media. So many of the employers, if not all, it's it's highly unlikely now. I don't think businesses can survive without being on on a, on certain platforms as well. So many of the larger organizations are on all the big platforms. So they're on Facebook, they're on LinkedIn, they're on Instagram, they're on TikTok, etc. But you will always find an organization being on one, at least one social media platform. So do that research, look for them. And often it'll say on their website, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram, check out their socials and look back. What's going on? Have they won any awards? Have they won any prizes? Have they announced um, a new product or a service? Have they announced any uh, kind of investment, which means, that, well, that's a good thing because the company is growing, it's expanding, they're going to be recruiting. So these are all things that you should know and you should be aware of because you will get an opportunity to ask questions at interview. So once your interview has taken place, right at the end of the interview, they will say, do you have any questions? And maybe there's something that you've heard about, or maybe there's something that you've looked at or you've read and you thought, oh, that's really interesting. I'm going to ask a little bit more about that. And that's going to impress the employers. And that's the whole point. You said earlier, Matthew, about having this fine line about boasting or, or, or trying to convince an employer why you're right. And, by you going in and being informed 
and asking those questions, you're just well researched. That's the first thing. And secondly, the whole point of going into an interview is all about promoting yourself. It's about selling yourself. You need to tell the employer who you are, what skills you have, and what you can do for that business. If you are not doing that, the next person will walk in, they will do it, they'll get the job. So basically our students need to step up. I like that word, step up. That is the right word for it, stepping up. Uh, because there are quite a number of um, people they are competing with on the interview. So the need to actually step up, like you had said. Now, while in the interview, how do you think international students can showcase their unique skills and experience during the interview to make them stand out from the other candidates? Okay. So first of all, things like um, appearance. We talked briefly earlier about first impressions, so being smart, being presentable. Um, you know, when you walk in, shaking hands, smiling, good eye contact. Um, you know, th there's always a little bit of small talk just before the interview starts. How are you today? Where have you come from today? You know, these are the kind of questions that little bit of banter. So again, that's something maybe that our students don't realize and understand that that takes place as well. And that's quite common in interviews. It's a form of relaxation. It's a form of making the, the student comfortable with the whole situation. So rather than going straight into the interview, there's a little bit of a chat going on. All right. So be prepared for that as well. And also when you're actually sat down, I think it's really important to know about, you know, body language, gestures, using your hands, um, using your legs. You know, a lot of people don't understand or don't realize that when they're being interviewed that they will, you know, touch their ear or scratch their head or cross their legs and then maybe the leg starts shaking oh, and you don't know what to do with your arms. So do you put them on the chair? Do you cross your arms? Do you put them on the lap? And because you're so nervous, you're kind of not knowing or understanding or realizing what you're doing as well. So things like um, body language is really important. And, and this is something that you can practice at home. You can film yourself. You can sit in front of a mirror. And again, this is something that we can help and support our students with through a mock interview. So we can actually observe our students. It's not just the verbal things that we, we look for. It's the nonverbal as well that we, we, we look for. And that's the feedback that we can provide to our students as well. So we can say, you know, great answers, Matthew. However, did you realize that you kept, you know, touching your arm like this every 10 seconds and they'll say no i didn't know i didn't realize that as well so it's being really conscious of the fact of what you're doing not just what you're saying but what you're doing as well the other thing as well i think in terms of going back to your original question about um calming those nerves which is really important as well is just ensuring that you know exactly where you're going for your interview you know is it online is it far away? Is it nearby? Have you planned your journey? If it is a face-to-face -face in person meeting, if it's online, you know, have you got the link? You know, is your tech all okay? Your Wi-Fi, your laptop, is it charged? Do you have um, your mobile phone nearby? Do you have a phone number of for them just in case anything goes wrong? So there's all these little things that our students don't really think about as well, because imagine that you suddenly you're hit with a Wi-Fi issue and you don't have a, a phone number to contact them. They may think that you've ghosted them as well. But if you've got a phone number, you can give them a quick call. Maybe you can delay it. Maybe you can sit or, or, or go to another location. Maybe the interview can be rearranged. So those are things that I think are really, really important. And also, Matthew, I think it's really important that when you're in the interview is to listen. 
to listen to the interviews, interview questions, and not to answer them straight away. Take it in. Take a moment to think about what they've asked and to think, yes, I've got this ready. I've got, I've got the answer to this. I've prepared for this. Breathe and then give your answer. And if you're unsure or you didn't hear them the first time, just simply say, excuse me, do you mind repeating that question? They're not going to mind. It just gives you a little bit more time to obviously assimilate your thoughts and to give the answer as long as you don't do that for every question. So again, breathing is really important and listening as well. And one final thing is don't talk too fast. So many of our international students, uh, they have a tendency to talk quite quickly. And that can be quite challenging for the employers as well, especially if there is an accent as well. So it's important that if you slow down and give your answer at the way that I'm talking now, then that's going to be a lot easier. When we are nervous, we do tend to speed things up. We will talk a lot quicker like this. And that's not going to help you as well. So once you kind of think about that, reflect, breathe, listen, give your answer, breathe again, I think it'll be a lot better. I think there should be uh, a lot of breathing exercise to be done before the actual interview so yes. that their nerves can be calmed. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that, um, Nahim. Um, I think part of the uh, point you mentioned was not um, rushing themselves when they are responding to the question. Yes. Um, over the years, when a student comes to us for prep, um, what I advise them is that you go in with the notes and then jot down the things that the interviewer are asking you. And like you said, they don't need to rush the response because like what you said, if they are calm to assimilate the question, take a moment to think about what the answer, the response would be, structure it properly well in their head, or maybe just putting some one or two, you know, um, notes down, then they can be able to, you know, um, go through the question well. Now, I was going to ask you a question around the body language, but you've touched on that already. Now, what I want to touch on is the assessment center, because um, I wanted to not just the international students to bear in mind that for some assessment center, the moment you enter into the room, the assessment has begun. Yes. So, because I know there are different techniques in the UK as regarding to assessment center. I never knew about that until I came into the UK when I began to um, study around the recruitment industry in the UK. So for assessment center, now we've talking about um, interview, which is still gonna go back to, but I want to talk about the assessment center now. What are the secrets to becoming a successful candidate in an assessment center? Okay, so we touched on this earlier in that if it's just an interview, then you've only got one thing to worry about. And you, there's only one thing to prepare for, the interview. However, if you're going to an assessment center, then there are so many other things that you need to prepare for. So the assessment center preparation needs to be even more thorough and sometimes the employers will tell the candidates that there will be an assessment center and we will be expecting this or this is what we will be testing you on whereas some others don't so that is where it's a little bit challenging because if you haven't been told what to expect then expect everything so that's so much more that you have to prepare for. So for those students that don't know what an assessment center is, it's basically an opportunity for um, employers to 
uh, they're usually popular roles. Yeah, these are popular roles. These are you, you know, usually graduate jobs or graduate opportunities that pay well, and therefore. The employer wants to know and be reassured that they are going to find the best candidates, and and simply by interviewing candidates has been proven that maybe that's not the best way or the best technique. It's part of that technique. However, it's really important, therefore, for the student to undertake certain tests within. A pressurized environment, and if they can handle that, then they'll ha- they'll be able to handle the job. So there are a number of different exercises or tests that students and, and candidates can expect if they do attend um, an assessment centre. So one of those could be, for example, a psychometric test. So that is often part of the interview process, and it could be something that's sent. To you at home to do online, but many assessment centres have a section for、um, psychometric tests as well. So that's something that some of our students find quite challenging, quite difficult. Many of our international students don't don't know or don't understand what a psychometric test is. It's something that you know their home employees in their home countries wouldn't have undertaken. So that's something that our students need to kind of、um, understand, and the only way that you will understand how psychometric tests work is by doing them. It's all preparation. Again, we're going back to preparation. So the more psychometric tests that you do, the better it is, and they don't just do it for the fun of it. So, say for example, you're going for an interview in,、uh, you know, a bank, an investment bank. Opportunity, maybe it's an a- analytical role. They want to see that you've got that analytical experience or that numeric experience, so they will coordinate a psychometric test to ensure that you match the skills that they require as well. So there's tests such as numerical, there's verbal tests, there's um, tests um, that are testing your personality. So again, in an interview situation, you could come across really confident and and say, "Yes, I'm really good at sales, and this is what I've done, this is what I've achieved." However, if you've undertaken a personality test, and that test indicates that you find it challenging and difficult to pick up the phone or meet with new clients, then you're not going to be a good salesperson. So that's why maybe a personality test. Is something that needs to be incorporated within that as well, and that's what employers do. They're just making sure that、um, they find the right person. Another situation, or another kind of test that you will find in an assessment center, is a group exercise. Now, that can be quite intimidating. So that means basically that you and the other candidates who are going for the same job. Are working on something, so it could be a discussion, it could be a project, it could be something that you need to make as well, and they observe you, and what they're looking for is they want to see how you act and how you react, so they want to see if you are saying the right things, if you're doing the right things, if you are. Showing maybe traits or skills of being a leader, if that's what they're looking for, great. Or are you showing, you know, or demonstrating、uh, traits of being a really good、uh, team worker? Or if you do nothing and say nothing, then again, that's going to be seen maybe as a positive, maybe as a negative. It all depends on what the assessors. Are looking for in terms of because they could be recruiting for a number of roles, so they could be front office roles, they could be back office roles, and they want to see how people are working. As you know, there are many jobs now that there isn't a lot of interaction with other members of the team or interaction outside of the organisation. So maybe they aren't looking for people who are loud or who can say or speak the loudest. 
maybe are they are looking for more introverted people, thinkers, people who are creative as well. So again, that all depends on the job, on the role as well. You may have to do a presentation as well. So you may be told about a presentation actually um, before the assessment centre. So they may say to you, prepare to give a presentation on this topic for 10 minutes. Or you may be told about the presentation topic on the day of the assessment centre. And they'll say, you've got 20 minutes to prepare for this presentation. We'll be in the next room when you're ready. Come and deliver it as well. So again, it all depends on what the employers are looking for. And the reason why they ask you for presentation is because they want to see whether you can communicate, whether you've got that confidence to stand up. Maybe the job involves a lot of communication. Maybe the job involves business development or selling um, or promoting. And having that confidence to stand up will be demonstrated. So you can't get that from an interview, but if you put that scenario or situation in front of them, then definitely. And don't forget that the interview, that one-to-one -one interview, is also part of the assessment centre as well. So that's often the last or the final thing that a shortlist or shortlisted candidates will, will, will have to undertake as well. There are so many other things as well that you can, I mean, we could talk about assessment centres all day, but they seem to be the main ones. Coming back to the assessment center, you made mention of what I was going to ask around um, teamwork. It can be tricky because sometimes um, candidates are not aware of the kind of things that employees are looking at for in an assessment center. For example, um, if they give them a tax to be in a group and deal with a situation, in a tax where you have to probably articulate your leadership skill. Now, if there are about, for example, about five people in that team, probably maybe three of them wants to articulate being a leadership. So how can a candidate stand out when other candidates also want to outshine the other? Because it's the way... I see some job seeker take it is to be a competitive game, which it is. Yes. On the long run, it is. Now, how if there's a scenario where we have three people among five people in a team who wants to articulate their leadership skills, how can someone stand out in that kind of situation? Okay. So first of all, hopefully the student would have some leadership knowledge or or leadership experience as well so they can draw on that experience and being a leader doesn't necessarily mean who speaks the loudest or shouts the loudest as well and that's what often happens in an assessment center situation where you will have a team of four or five or six candidates working together in a group or on a scenario or a situation and you will often find one maybe two of the candidates who are just being vocal but not making much sense so they want to be heard they want to be see they want to be seen and they think by being visible being you know using their arms and body language and trying to speak over people is going to be the right thing and it's often not sometimes the best leaders are the ones that sit back, listen, they take everything in, and then they give their viewpoint towards the middle or the end of the discussion as well. So that's something that our students don't understand or realize. And that's something that I would often advise as well. When I talk to my students about assessment centers, and when, I, when I've had feedback back from our students, and they've said, Naeem, you were so right. There was that one person who was really loud and um, was quite rude and wasn't taking anyone's feedback into consideration. That's not a good leader. A good leader is someone who understands the situation, who knows what's going on, who's covered all bases, and then is able to make a judgment to move forward. 
And that's what the employer would be looking for if leadership skills is something that they're looking for as well. So it's all about reading the room. It's all about understanding what the employer and what particular skill they are trying to identify. And again, our students should look at the person specification. So the job description is a document that gives, um, you know, students an idea of what the role would be on a day to day, week to week or month to month basis, basically the duties and responsibilities. However, the person specification is a document of what the employer is looking for, what their expectations are in terms of their candidates. So in terms of knowledge, skills, and experience. And if you know that document well, you will be able to identify, ah, right, in this situation, the employer is looking for me to demonstrate this skill. Therefore, this is where I need to set up, you know, I need to promote myself and talk more about this particular scenario or this particular situation as well. So that's again, all to do with preparation. Thank you so much for that, um, Nahim. So you've touched a lot of points on assessment center, which are valuable points. Um, let's talk about um, cultural difference now. Are there any specific cultural um, consideration or differences that international students should be aware of when interviewing for jobs in a foreign country? Are you talking about international students here in the UK? Yeah. Or are you talking about maybe international students in other cultures or different no, countries? No, in the UK. I mean, we are in the UK, so international students in the UK. Yeah. Okay, that, that's fine. Um, I think many of our international students, having lived in the UK for, it all depending on what they've studied. So if it's a master's, they've been here for a year. If they've studied a degree, they've been here for, th you know, three years. Um, obviously, if they're on their graduate route, they've been here a little bit longer as well on the visa. So uh, many of the students now, or their graduates by then, um, they will have a better understanding of those cultural differences. So this is, I assume, it's that small talk at the beginning um, when you go into an interview and, you know, how are you? What's your name? How was your journey? It's it's knowing and understand that shaking of the hands, eye contact, um, being prepared, expecting certain kind of questions as well. So in terms of cultural things, the more interview practice and the preparation that you have, the better you will understand what to expect as well. So again, I'm, you know, many of our students um, have gone to interviews and they've not worn a suit. So the first interview and the first assessment center that they've gone to, so they could be wearing just trousers, a shirt, you know, a skirt, a blouse, um, and they've looked at their counterparts and they've looked at the other, and everyone is really smart you know, they've got a tie, they're wearing a two-piece or maybe a three-piece suit. And that's what I was saying earlier in terms of that first impression. And then they realize, hang on a minute, this is something that I should have known about. I didn't realize, I didn't speak to my career service, or I didn't read or understand about what I should be wearing at interview. That's when they go for the next one and they're really smart and they're suited and they're booted as well. So those kind of things are really, really important. And the other thing as well is a lot of our students don't, they think a, a, an interview is a one-way process. So they expect to go into an interview, be asked questions, and then that's it. During the interview, if you have a good vibe or a good feeling, then you can ask a question. There will be opportunities to ask questions at the end of the interview. And I always recommend that our students ask at least two, if not three questions as well. Have those questions ready. All right. Now, sometimes those questions may be asked or answered during the interview. And that's why it's important to have two or three 
ready just in case as well. And that could be anything regarding, you know, the job. You know, what expectations will you have of me, you know, in, in my first month? Um, what am I, um, what training and development do you offer? Um, who will I be working with? There are so many questions that you can ask regarding the team, regarding the department. You can ask about, you know, plans, growth, products, services. And maybe there's something that you've read online or looked on their social media. And you thought, that's really interesting. I'm going to ask a question about that as well. And that's something, again, that our students don't really prepare for is asking those questions at the end. They often say, no, I don't have any questions. And that's seen as a negative from the employer. There's an expectation that you will ask a question. So our home students know this. Many of our international students aren't aware of this as well until they realize that they have been unsuccessful and they get the feedback. So asking questions is really, really important. I think it still comes down to um, the role that cultural differences plays uh, because um, some international students might not be aware that that is a structure here in the UK. And it takes them to make that first mistake. And they're now realizing that is for the people who ask for feedbacks. But for the ones who don't ask for feedbacks, we keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. Yes. And then they would complain not getting jobs and not being yep. successful in an interview. So, Diane, can you tell us uh, any successful interview stories where an international student was able to make a very strong impression of themselves in an interview? Yeah, I've, I've got many, <laughs> so many. Um, and unfortunately for many of our students who have eventually got roles, it's been a tough, challenging journey for them. Whereas, so, you know, they've worked hard to, you know, undertake their studies. They've got some really good experience maybe in a part-time job maybe they've had the opportunity to um, get some UK experience in internship and they have got through that you know the the CV and the application form stage and they've got to the interview stage and they keep falling there again and again and again and that's where we really need to work hard well, we need to work hard with our international students right throughout the whole process from beginning to end anyway. But many of our students now really understand the importance of their CV and that cover letter and, and making sure that they really promote and sell themselves. Whereas when they get to the interview, unfortunately, something happens and they don't finally get there. So one of my students, he's now graduated. He he was so hardworking, so diligent, and he went through that really long process of, first of all, not getting, um, not getting shortlisted, not getting invited to interview. So we really focused on getting that CV um, in, into a state where it really promoted him as an IT professional, um, really promoting the difference that he'd made in his internship and really promoting not just the tech experience, but also the softer skills as well. And that's something that wasn't evident on his CV. All right. And that naturally came through in his applications as well. So when he was applying for jobs, half were CVs, half were applications. And we got to a stage then where he was getting interviews then. So we turned that around. We had crossed um, a really important phase in terms of his recruitment journey. He was starting to get interviews and he was after a graduate job and he was attending assessment centers and he wasn't being selected, but he was asking for feedback. So he would come and see me. We would talk. He would prepare. He would go for the interview. Oh, sorry, the assessment center. And then 
he wouldn't get the job. So he would come back and then he would get feedback. So that was really important for the particular graduate that I was working with, that feedback. And it was a case of, right, I know where I'm going wrong. Let's go back to Naeem. Let's focus on this as well. And it was a, a, a bit of a slow process in that sometimes he would go back to another assessment center or another interview and there would be something else that we hadn't really thought about as well. So it's not just a case of going in and there's one thing that's wrong. There could be several things that the student or the graduate is not doing. So it could be the interview. It could be the psychometric tests. It could be the group discussion. It's maybe someone being too vocal. It's someone maybe, maybe being some, you know, not vocal enough as well. There were so many different situations and scenarios as well. And this particular graduate actually had made a really good impression at an assessment center. He did really, really well. But, but someone had beaten him. Someone had beaten him. And the, and the interviewer said to him, if that, if that student or that graduate hadn't attended, you would have got the job. So I knew at that time that we had worked really hard and we had covered all bases. Two weeks later, that particular student was called by the employer. The student or the, the, the person that they'd offered the job to, um, for some sort of reason, I don't know because it was never explained to us or, or, or to my student as well, didn't take the job and my student or my graduate was offered the job. So it was a hard work. It was hard, hard, not so much for me, but you know, for my student, having that motivation to go back again and again and again. And that's difficult. And there were so many times where I thought my student was going to give up, but he kept going because he could see this end goal. And that's another thing as well that sometimes our international students lack is that end goal. You've got to work towards a goal. You've got to have a plan. So if you have no plan, you're not going to have any goals. You're not going to have an end destination. And that's what we worked really, really hard with my international student is that we worked hard initially to ensure that he had a plan. He had a focus. He had a direction. And then it was a journey. And the last journey was the interview and the assessment center that he was finding quite that last hurdle was quite difficult and challenging to overcome. But he got there in the end, slightly by chance, but he got there. It doesn't matter. So, Naheem, that's a very brilliant success story. I want to ask you a question now. How long did this process take? This process took about a year. So it took you're... about 12 months from the preparation to your candidates landing a job. And that's someone, yeah, and that's someone who really worked hard, who was hardworking, who was diligent, who was focused, but still it took a year. It, yeah. So from that moment, that first meeting that we had regarding, you know, that first stage of ensuring that the CV is right and correct. So, but, but his process had been longer because he'd been applying for jobs. And he wasn't getting anywhere. And that happened for many, many months until he came to us. So from the moment that I first met him to the moment that he was offered the job was approximately a year. I'm glad I asked that question because some international students feel or think that it could take just a week to get a job. <laughs> and if they're not getting it within a week or two, they began, they, they began to complain. So it's just to put out there that this process takes time. Yes. It's not a definition of an overnight success. There is no overnight success. 
overnight success is the divination of numerous preparations in the past. Yeah. You know, it's, so. And, and this isn't just for international students. This is for home, for all students as well. You've got to put the hard work in. You've got to put that hard work in and you've got to cover all bases. Um, it's not just a case of turning up for an assessment center and being rejected and there's, and then going for another interview and being rejected and think, I, I've, 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 I've applied to 10 jobs. I've had three interviews and I've not got the job. What's going on? I know of students who have applied for hundreds of jobs. They've had lots of interviews and they're still looking. They're still searching, but they, the, the thing is, they're still, they've, they've got to keep going because if you stop or if you complain, then you're not going to get anywhere. So you, it's a, it's a process of learning. Okay. And, and the whole recruitment journey is an art. You can learn it. You can, if you, as our students don't take the time and trouble to understand the process, the resources are all there. They're all out there. Just talk to us. Or talk to your career service. We can help and support you and guide you right throughout that journey, just like I did with not just that student that I gave you the example of, but many students. Many students join or, or come to the, the career service at different parts of their career journey. And that, and you know, it could be just to look for a part-time job. It could be just to improve their CV. It could be this final interview that they're going to get a graduate job. But as long as they engage, that's the thing as well. And, and we've said this before in our previous chat, Matthew, that as we find that when international students engage with the career service, they are better informed. They know they have a focus. They have a direction. They know where they've been going wrong. We can guide them. And once we've had that initial meeting, then there's a likelihood that that student will come back to us again and, and again. And our doors are always open. You know, we're here right throughout the summer, for example, you know, to help and support our students as well. But if a student is applying for jobs and not getting anywhere and doesn't really understand why, then I've, I'm, I'd be very surprised as to, uh, this is the other thing as well. Many of our then students talk to other students and they'll confer between themselves and they'll, they'll, they'll find solutions between themselves and they're just going round and round and round in a circle. And I think, and I address this with my students and I'll say, the student that you're talking to at the moment, are they experts in recruitment or are they experts in careers? Do they know what they're talking about? Have they found a job? And it's like, Oh, no. So that's why I always, always advise our students to engage with the career service because we do know what we're talking about. And we are here to help and develop their employability skills to get them to where they want to be. And we will continue to do that. It's not just a case of we'll have one meeting and then that's it. They can come back to see us again and again and again. And there's so many resources as well. Yet yeah, there are so many resources that are available that are provided by the career service. And there's a lot of resources that are freely available on the internet. YouTube videos are great. This, this is something that I always promote. There's some great content creators who talk about jobs, talk about interviews, talk about the different types of interviews, competency based interviews, strengths based interviews, generic interviews, scenario based interviews, panel interviews. This is all information that's readily available. And again, this goes down or back down to research as well and being prepared. Thank you very much for that, Nahim. Just, if, just on that note, I want to just ask you a very last question now before you go, right? Can you share with us, because of your, your years of experience, can you please share with us what is the secret? That is not from the international student perspective, but from the employers themselves, what is the secret of becoming successful in an interview? Um, it's it's all down to preparation. It's I, it's the first thing that we talked about, and 
it's the last thing that I've got to say as well. So I've interviewed many, many candidates, having been a recruitment consultant for, you know, over 20 years or so, I've met many, many candidates. And there are still some that I can recall and think, wow, they were great. And this is what an employer wants to see. They want to be wowed. So I often compare it to, you know, the TV programs such as Britain's Got Talent or The X Factor. Yeah, Imagine that you're watching that and you see a performance and you go, wow, that was incredible. That's what employers are looking for. They want to be blown away. And one of the things that you need to do, these students, is to be prepared. They need to do their research. They need to understand that they will be asked certain questions. You can't walk into an interview and answer questions that you've not really researched or not prepared for and expect to get the job. All right. And the more interviews that you've been for, the more prepared you'll be for any kind of situation and scenario as well. So just like my my student that I supported, where he had been through many interviews, many situations, and he was learning along the way. And he was saying, right, this is working for me, so I'm going to take that. That's not working for me. I'm going to drop that. I'm going to try something unique. Or I'm going to try something different as well. Remember, we all are unique. We've all got our USPs, our unique selling points. That's what we need to be bringing to the table. And unfortunately, many of our students and many of our international students aren't showing those USPs. Yeah, they're playing it safe. All right. So my final thing really would be to stand out, stand out from the crowd, be confident, be self-assured, be prepared, be ready and get ready to step up. I said this before. It's not just a case of walking in doing that interview and expecting to get that job. No, you've got to work hard for it. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Nahim. Um, this has been an exclusive uh, conversation with you um, with the exceptional insights you are giving. But yeah, um, thank you so much for your, for your time today, Nahim. Uh, right. It was a very My huge pleasure. pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much for inviting me. And um, yeah, I wish you all the best, Matthew. And I look forward to catching up with you again very soon to help and support our international students in the UK. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. <laughs>